If you're looking to get a pair of low cut Doc Martin boots or shoes, these two are the most popular ones. They are the 1461s, which are basically a low cut version of the 1460s. And then also you have the Adrian's, which are the loafers that Doc Martin makes and they're very popular. So today I'm gonna to be comparing the two to see the pros and the cons within both of them. Hopefully I can help you out if you wanna get a pair. So when it comes to sizing, this is probably the biggest thing to look out for. So for my 1461s, they're very easy. They're like true to size. I made sure when I went, I actually ordered these online. At the time, I did not even go to a Doc Martin store. I've already had my 1460s and I just kind of guesstimated and I was right. I thought at that time, Doc Martens, once you find your Doc Martin size, it's the same for all of your Doc Martens, but that's not the case. So for my 1461s, they felt good. And I would just have to say, maybe if you have wide feet, go a size up. But generally, if you measure your feet and then you look at the Doc Martin size chart and then you go like a little bit the size above what you measured, then you should find your Doc Martin size. But for me personally, it was very easy finding my 1460. When it came to the Adrian's, finding my size was a little bit difficult. This time I went to the store. I don't know. I was just wanting to try a lot of different Doc Martens. And when I went in, I tried the smooth leather ones. They fit perfectly just like the 1461s. But one thing to keep in mind with the Adrian's is that you can't tie them. So they have to fit kind of snug or like they have to fit good even after you break them in. So you don't want them to be loose or anything like that. So sizing can be a little bit difficult for the Adrian's. But for me, I tried the Bex. For some reason, I had to go a size down. I'm normally a size nine, but for the Bex, they just fit a little bit different. And that was like my biggest concern when it came to the Adrian's, just trying to find my size because Doc Martens, they make like literally it's the same shoes, but for some reason, the Bex were bigger. If you understand what I mean, I had a size eight for the Bex, but for the smooth leather, they were like a nine. I believe the cherry ones that I do have, I believe they're smooth leather. They're like a size nine and they fit perfectly just like my 1461s. So yeah, that's the biggest thing about the sizing. And then also another thing to remember, the Adrian's, they're kind of a little bit more narrower for me. Like I noticed that the Adrian's, the toe box area around the toe area, they're more narrow than the 1461s. So if you do want to get a pair of Adrian's, please go to the store, try them on because Ordering them online, I don't recommend it, but if you have to, go for it. So breaking into these two Doc Martens, they did have their own unique challenges, but for me in particular, I felt like the 1461s, I got them pretty early, as in like they were one of my first couple of Doc Martens that I did broke into, and I didn't struggle with them, but they were the smooth leather. And when it comes to the smooth leather, they are very difficult to break into. They're one of the hardest Doc Martens to break into. For me, I didn't do anything too special. I just put them on, went outside for a walk, and eventually I broke into them. So some of the pain points that I did have with my 1461s were like the back of the heel area. Since it's like low cut and stuff, it digs into there. And then around that ankle area too, those were like my two biggest pain points that I do remember. But when it comes to the 1461s, if anything, I can loosen the shoelace and things like that. So. I can have some breathable room for my feet. And then I believe I did double sock too, you know? That's just like a Doc Martin tradition now. They should just give out two socks every time you buy a pair of Doc Martens, honestly. On the other side of the spectrum, when it comes to the Adrian's, one of the biggest things that I was kind of worried about when breaking them in is, are they gonna get wider or like, are they gonna be loose after I break them in so far? They've been good. I haven't had any issues with them. And I felt like with this, the pain points that I had with my Adrian's was across like the top of the foot, like where like the tassel loafer and thing is like that one kind of hurt. And then since they're narrow, I'm telling you, if you have wide feet, these might hurt. So, I mean, for the most part, just walk with them and then eventually you'll break them in. But the Adrian's, I kind of knew how to break into Doc Martens, so breaking them in wasn't as difficult as like when I first got my first pair of Doc Martens. I mean, and then also another thing to remember about breaking into your Doc Martens, it also depends on the 
leather that you do get. For example, the smooth leather, very hard to break into or the hardest Doc Martens to break into. But on the other side of the spectrum, you do have the soft leather, which is very easy. You can just put them on, you're good to go, and you don't have to worry about it. It's the same thing for the vegans. They're actually not leather, so you don't have to worry about all of that. So overall, these two are pretty good pair of shoes. Like I necessarily don't go wrong with either of them. The 1461s, I've had them longer and they're very durable. I don't have any issues with them, even though some people say I never wear them, but I do wear them, not as much, but I like them, especially now that it's warm outside. I am rocking my 1461s a lot because my 1460s, they're more winterized or fall. You know, so now that it's warm, I know I'm about to go outside with my 1461s. They look good. I don't have to worry about it too much. So, yes, I do like them. They're very durable. I haven't had any like stitching issues or anything like that. They're very comfortable after you break into them. And then when it comes to the Adrians with these, at first they were a little bit weird to walk into. But after you break into them, they were fine. And then also, I just want to talk about the price point. They're very similar. I believe the... 1461s, they're about 120, and then the Adrian's about 150. I mean, it's around the same price range. So, yes and no, depending on which ones you do get, they do vary, they fluctuate, and um, sometimes they go on sale, I believe. Don't quote me on that. But they do fluctuate, and I do think they're all around the same price range, and there's not a big difference between the two. It just varies on which pair that you want to get for me personally i do go in and out with both of them like monday i'll wear this tuesday i'll wear that and then i do feel like when it comes to style the loafers they're a little bit more i don't want to say classy but like dressy you know even though for me i do like do like somewhat of like semi-formal with them or casual you know so they're very good and i do feel like my 1461s i can wear it with a suit but when it comes to the 1461s i can wear it with a suit but between the two i'm definitely choosing the adrians with a suit over the 1461s i just feel like the adrians they're more professional and the 1460 the 1461s they're also professional but the adrians just give that edge and yeah thanks for watching if you have any questions leave them down in the comments below